Hello, Math 8 students. Today we have an important transition, and it's not just a transition between geometry and statistics, although it is that, but it's a transition between looking at deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. And I have a specific objective, which is you're going to construct a scatter plot, and, which is easy, you'll see in a little bit, and look for general patterns of association, which is also relatively easy, I hope you'll see. Um, but before just going right there, I really want to step back and look at the shift from deductive to inductive reasoning, because it's really at the heart of what we're doing in math and in bridge here. So first of all, I want to look at when deductive reasoning patterns, which are so powerful, deductive reasoning is so powerful, but it can break down and we're going to see where. So we have two what are called syllogisms. Don't worry about that word too much. It's just basically deductive reasoning patterns here. Um, but it's a good word, syllogism. And the first one, we have a premise, which is that if two lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. And the subpremise basically says that, well, this is a situation where you have two lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal. And we know the definition of alternate interior angles, and, and since the premise is true and the subpremise is true, then the conclusion 100% has to be true. Angle one has to be congruent to angle two no matter what. Okay, the second syllogism works like this. We have a premise. People who use Jack's Botanical Shampoo always have a good hair day. That's the premise. The sub-premise is that this is a bottle of Jack's Botanical Shampoo, and Ryan is a person who uses it this morning. The conclusion that flows from that is that Ryan has a good hair day. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think about which of these syllogisms, which of these deductive reasoning patterns seems the most trustworthy to you? That's an, maybe a straightforward question. Maybe less straightforward is the question of why. Why is it that one of these deductive reasoning patterns breaks down? And maybe you saw that the spot that it breaks down, I'll stick with this color, is here. Here. People who use Jack's Botanical Shampoo always have a good hair day. That does not strike me as nearly as reliable a premise as the premise in the first syllogism. If, if, a line, if two lines are parallel and are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles will be congruent. That feels very reliable. The thing about Jack Shampoo, not so reliable. And if you have a questionable opening premise, then the whole deductive reasoning pattern breaks down. Our whole comfortable world falls apart here of what we've been accustomed to with math. And we're left with having to gather information and use inductive reasoning. I've written it this way here. Sadly for Jack and the people who work for his shampoo company, there is no general mathematical premise related to Jack's shampoo and good hair days. We've been kicked out of the ivory tower of deductive reasoning. But it's going to be okay because we can use a tool called a scatter plot to at least see whether there's an association between Jack's shampoo and good hair. Not, we can't see that whether Jack's shampoo causes good hair from a scatter plot, but we're going to see we're going to see if there's an association. So to do this again, we have no general principle at all, but we're going to we're, we are going to gather data and we're going to hire an independent research company, well Jack is, to collect data on two variables. And variable one is the number of days. A person uses Jack shampoo during the month of April, and variable two, as you can see, is the average, we also call that the mean, good hair rating. This is a self-reported measure, obviously, uh, reported by that person on a one to 10 scale. And what Jack shampoo company is hoping is that there's gonna be a positive association between the number of days that their product gets used and the number of days that people report having good hair. So let's, let's see if they can do it. I wrote this down. And the research company went out and they interviewed 10 people and collected data on the number of days using Jack shampoo. 
here and the number of the mean good Harris score. And our job uh, is this. We're going to put this information on a scatter plot. And to do that, you might want to notice first, I've, it's very important in this to write down the labels on your axes. So here we have the number of days on the x-axis, number of days using Jack shampoo. That's what's called the independent variable. And what we're going to say might, might depend on the independent variable is the average good hair rating. And to look for that pattern, we're going to just um, take a look at, let's say, let's look at our first one. Say we have the, um, this coordinate pair 15, 7 that comes right off the table here. Okay, we're going to draw it on our graph here. And so we're at 15 across and 7 up. Actually, that's not very good. 15 across, 7 up on the y. Next one is going to be 18 across on the x, 6 up on the y, 12 across, 8 up. 14 across, 6 up. 24 across, 4 up. Interesting. 10 across, 9 up. 30 along the x-axis, only 2 up. 16 across on the x-axis, 6 up for this person. 17 across, 7 up, we're almost done here. And 15 across, here is 6. Now there's several things you could notice here. Um, one, and this comes up in your book, it's not the most important piece, but it's something that's interesting, is that we have kind of a cluster of, of data right here. So that's called a cluster. The really key thing though, is to look at what's the pattern of association. In other words, what happens as people use Jack shampoo more and more and more and more? Are they reporting having average good hair days or average bad hair days? as they use Jack's shampoo more and more and more. And maybe you'll see that if we were to kind of draw a loose line through here, that the results are not looking good for Jack's company. Maybe we'll bring the line kind of more like that. But in any case, um, Jack's company, that as people use Jack's shampoo more and more and more, they're actually reporting having their hair look worse. It's not looking good. Now, it's important to notice that all this is showing is a pattern of association, right? We only have 10 people that we've interviewed, and also that it's just, just an association. We can't say that Jack Shampoo is causing people to be unhappy with the way their hair looks. Can't say that, but we, we seem to see an association. All right, so that's how to draw a scatter plot. This is our objective. Students can construct a scatter plot. We've done that. And we're going to get to the second piece here, too, which is looking for patterns of association. And this is um, pretty straightforward. If we have, um, this is the x-axis again, here's the y-axis. If, as the x goes up in these coordinate pairs, maybe there's an outlier up here, I don't know. But as the y, if, as the x goes up, the y tends to go up. That's a positive positive association. A negative association is the opposite. As the x goes up, the y variable is going to go down. Okay, the two are negatively, negatively associated. And no association, here's the x again, here's the y. Basically, it's a random group or seemingly random group of points, no association at all. And that's the second piece to our uh, lesson for 14.1 is looking for those patterns of association. There's three patterns. Do you remember them? Positive. As X goes up, Y goes up. Negative. 
as x goes up, y goes down, and no association. As x goes up, y does random stuff, essentially. So hopefully that was fun, and um, uh, we're going to have some work on this, and then we're going to kind of come back and look at more, more technical details in terms of um, those lines through the scatter plots in the next lesson. Have a good day.